Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode right here on 2020 Flight Simmers. Today is going to be our third episode in our series of VFR Basics and today we're going to be taking a trip from a uncontrolled airport or an untowered airport to a Class D towered airport. By the way, if you're new to the channel, I would love to welcome you. Highly suggest you go down below, hit that subscribe button, tick that little bell, and while you're down there, smash the thumbs up button. Really helps us out, lets us know we're doing a good job, and you don't want to miss any of our future videos just like this one. So, if you want to know more about airspaces and how to navigate from an uncontrolled airspace to a controlled airspace, stay tuned right here on 2020 Flight Simmers. <laughs> Before we get started in today's flight from an untowered airport to a towered airspace, first we're going to go over the VFR chart and how to read a VFR chart. There we go. So this is our plan for today. We're going to be coming from Crystal Lakes here down this canyon and then entering Glacier Park International. Now, Glacier Park International is a Class D airspace. We went over these briefly in our Episode 1 of our VFR Flight Guide, and we're going to talk a little bit more about how to differentiate this Class D airspace from a Class G airspace in which we're coming from today. And one of the things to keep in mind, that Class D airspace exists around most airports with an operational control tower. So most of your D airspaces are going to be a controlled airspace with a tower. Generally, Class D airspace extends from surface to about 2,500 feet above ground level and exists within about 3 to 10 nautical miles from the airport. When you're looking at this VFR chart, all Class D airspaces will be depicted with a dashed blue line and within that dashed blue line, the maximum altitude of this airspace is depicted in a broken box right here in hundreds of feet. So now how you're going to read this blue line right here, and that is 5,500 feet. If it was 6,0, it would be 6,000 feet. If it was 2,5, it would be 2,500 feet. So I hope that explains how to figure out the altitude restrictions within this airspace here and all Class D airspaces will have that. We're going to keep that in mind and also think about one other thing that you had just heard about the Class D airspace extends from ground level to approximately 2,500 feet. Now the first thing you're going to say by looking at this is well this is 5,500 feet. Well, remember that 2,500 feet is above ground level, and if we take a look at the Glacier Park International information, we can see that the surveyed elevation here is just about 3,000 feet. So, 5,500 feet would be your MSL level, not your AGL level. If you guys have any questions, please post them down below in the comments, and I will get right to those. Now, on that note, we are going to talk about some VFR flight rules with clouds within those airspaces. Because clouds can play a huge part on us being able to find the airport, let alone landing at that airport. So on your screen right here, we have some restrictions for clouds in the various airspaces. Now, one of the first things you'll see right at the top, Class A airspace, is not for VFR flight at all. So anything above 18,000 feet, leave that to the IFR guys. So if you need to, just go ahead and pause the video and take a good look at this screen because there's a lot of good information here about cloud restrictions. But we don't have that much time, so we're gonna move on right now. So in a Class G airspace, the rules are pretty minimal. Entry requirements are none. And we're going to go from a Class G to now a Class D airspace. In that Class D airspace, there are some requirements. So let's take a look at those below here and see what we have. Again, we've talked about our VFR cloud distance minimums, but there is one other thing. We need to have prior two-way communications before entering that airspace. To do that, you must get on the radio Tell them who you are, where you are, and what you intend on doing. After that point, they will acknowledge you or they will tell you to stand by. 
if they give you a standby code, that is not an okay to enter the airspace. If they ask you to stand by, you must stand by outside of that airspace until they acknowledge you. More on that as we get through the series here today, because in this episode today, we are going to be using live ATC. So you're going to see firsthand how to communicate with air traffic control and not a computer. There is also one more bit of information we're going to talk about when we're planning a VFR route. So we didn't talk about this in episode one because it was a good bit of information that I crammed down into your heads already. So now we're also going to talk about flight cruising altitudes. Now, this is when you're flying anything above 3,000 feet above ground level. Anything below 3,000 feet above ground level, you can pretty much fly any altitude you want as long as you're 500 feet above the ground. Once you get above that 3,000 foot mark, though, then there's a couple rules that you must follow. The reason for these rules are plain and simple, so we don't run into each other while we're flying in the highways in the sky. So one of the things you'll notice on this little drawing here is there's pretty much two halves. Uh, we break everything up from 359 degrees to 180 degrees and 0 degrees to 179 degrees. So we will no longer be flying at 4,000 feet. We will not be flying at 3,000 feet. We will always be flying with a factor of 500 in our altitude. Now, depending on which way you're traveling, east or west, that will pretty much tell you what altitude you need to be flying at, either an even altitude number or an odd altitude number. All right, so let's take a look at the flight plan here for today. We're going to be leaving Crystal Lakes, which is right up here north, and we are going to be traveling southeast to get over here to Glacier Park International. Because our main travel direction will be southeast, if we look on our pie chart here, if we're going in that direction, anything above 3,000 feet now above ground level, we must now be traveling at an odd altitude number. So we can, after 3,000 feet, we can then go to 3,500, then the next one will be 5,500, and so on. All right, so I hope I explained that pretty well. If I didn't, please go ahead and post a comment down below and I'll go ahead and try to answer that for you. What we're gonna do is hop in the Cessna 172 now and get everything put into the GPS. And if you have not seen our GPS course, I will go ahead and put a link down below for that. That was episode two in this series for how to navigate the G1000 GPS. I apologize to everybody who has watched it or will watch it. The volume level of the music was a little loud, and um, that will be changed from here on out. So let's go ahead and get the Cessna started up. So we're going to go ahead and hit the battery and the alternator, and then we're going to go ahead and hit the beacon and strobe. Next thing I want to do is go ahead and turn on the fuel pump, make sure that we have full mixture, crack that throttle a bit. We've already checked our fuel valve is in the on position, and now we're going to go ahead and give that key a little turn. Once we do that, we can go ahead and turn on our avionics one and two bus, go ahead and hit the nav lights on, turn that fuel pump off, and now let's get to programming this GPS. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do to program out our flight today is go ahead and hit the flight plan menu. We're gonna go down very quickly and go through setting up our flight for today. Again, if you haven't seen our video on how to program the G1000, I highly suggest you watch that because we're gonna go through this pretty quickly today. Now, I know we're gonna be coming in on runway 02 on Glacier Park because I've flown this many times and that is the active runway for this airport. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter that in the nav data. The next thing that we need to do is go ahead and take a look at the airport that we're going to right now. Um, so this is Glacier Park International and this is the airport diagram. We are going to be coming in on runway two. What I am hoping to do is come in from the north. They're going to give us a left downwind 
runway two, which we will come down this way, make our base leg, and land the plane on runway two. One of the other reasons why we need this is, one, it gives us our ATIS information here at the top, as well as the tower information to establish our two-way radio communication. All right, so now that we have all that programmed in our flight plan, we can go ahead and hit the flight plan button, and that will make that go away. We're going to range out a little bit, and next thing I want to do is I'm going to come down here and just set up some things in my... PFD menu and just make sure everything is set to the way I want it to be. Before we get ready and go ahead and taxi out, there's a couple more things that we need to do to get ready for our flight today. Now one of those things is we need to set up our altitude right down here in our altitude bug. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up for about 4,300 feet. Next thing we need to do is go ahead and set our barrow. You can either hit the B button on your keyboard or, again, I don't believe this airport has any ATIS information, so you're going to have to get it from the runway information and then figure out what your barrow is going to be. The next thing we need to do is get some comms ready on the radio. So the first comm frequency that I want to tune in here is the guard frequency for this airport. It's 122.7. All right, now I'm able to change this information. I have a stream deck that I'm using to change all my comm and nav information, so you're not going to see me turning any of these knobs. Again, if you want to know how to do that, check out the G1000 video. All right, so now we have the guard frequency programmed in. The next thing I want to do is program in the ATIS frequency for our airport that we're going to be arriving at. The ATIS frequency for that is 132.625, so we're going to go ahead and enter that right now, and we're going to put that as the active comm frequency there. Now, the reason why you need to establish the ATIS information before you enter the airport, one, you need to get the barometric pressure for that airport so that you don't crash, and two, you need to find out if there are any special advisories for the airport, and you need to find out which runways are in use. So that can better help you plan your plan of attack for getting into that airport. There is one other frequency that I'm going to program in here. And that is the tower frequency for Glacier Park International. Now the tower frequency for that airport is 124.55. So we're going to go ahead and put that in our standby frequency for COM1. So now as you can see, our standby frequency is 124.55. All right, so that pretty much sets up our radios here for our comm radios. The only other thing that you may want to do, because this airport does use an ILS, is you could also put the ILS frequency in your nav radio over here. Now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and turn the parking brake off. We have our taxi lights on. We're going to switch on the pitot heat, make sure that's good to go, and turn on some panel lights here. Before we taxi on an untowered airport, uh, what we need to do is we still need to let everybody know what our intentions are. So we still need to let everybody on the frequency know who we are, where we are, and what we intend to do. So here's how we would do that. We've got all the frequencies in. Now we're just going to get on the guard frequency and let everybody know what we intend to do. Crystal Lakes traffic, Cessna November 489er Tango Golf, taxiing to runway 14, Crystal Lakes traffic. All right, so now we let everybody know what our intentions are and where we are. Now, 1-4 should actually be directly behind us right here. So now we're going to line up and get ready to take off. Before we take off, we need to let everybody know that's on this frequency, again, what our intention is. So, again, we're going to get on the radio, and it goes something like this. Crystal Lakes traffic, Cessna November 489er Tango Golf, taking off runway 14 to 4,300 feet, maintaining runway heading, Crystal Lakes traffic. So we pretty much told everybody who we are, where we are now, and what our plans are, what our intentions are after we take off. That might help somebody when they're coming in. All right, let's go to full power now going to go ahead and add our 10% flaps and let's get this baby off the ground things will start to get a little bit serious once we get closer to the class delta airspace so 
just keep that in mind. I won't be talking as much. We just need to get above these trees here so we can dip down a little bit and pick up some airspeed. There we go. And we're just going to keep maintaining our ascent and we're also going to keep the flaps on. Uh, we're not going to pull back on the flaps just yet. Now we're going to get back on the uh, air traffic here and let everybody know uh, what we are doing now on the guard frequency. Crystal Lakes traffic, Cessna November 489 or Tango Golf clear of the airspace. This will be my final transmission, Crystal Lakes traffic. All right, so we let everybody know that might be monitoring this frequency that this was our last transmission. We will no longer be transmitting on that frequency. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and activate our COM2 on the radio here. So right down here, if we hit the COM2, it will allow us to listen to both COM1 and COM2 frequencies. Now remember, we programmed in the ATIS information for our arriving airport, so hopefully that should come up soon and we should start to hear it. Now I'm going to turn on the autopilot and that will maintain altitude. Put us into altitude hold mode. Bring us up to 4,400 feet. All right, I have already retracted the flaps, and I guess one of the things I forgot to do was turn on my landing lights from when I took off. So we're going to go ahead and do that now, turn off our taxi lights and leave on the landing lights because we're going to need them anyway for when we come in to land at our arriving airport. So what I'm going to do is turn us into heading hold mode, and this way I can navigate us around with the heading bug while I am going over some things with you. Now another thing that we didn't talk about on our last episode is when we're coming into land, there's some things that can help us on our approach. So what you're going to see on your screen right here, uh, these are what's called either the Pappy lights or a Vazzy lights that are going to be on the runway. So it, how these lights read are pretty simple. If you're coming into that runway and you see all white lights, that tells you you're too high. If you have one red and three white, you're still high, but you're almost on the correct path. When you have two red and two white, the saying is, you're all right. If you have three red and one white, that tells you you're a little bit too low, and four red, you're dead. The other thing is, we are using a custom scenery today for Glacier Park International, and links will be down below for that as well. You can see we are getting tossed and turned a little bit here in this little Cessna. So what I'm going to do is we're going to continue on with the flight, and I will bring you guys back when we get a little bit closer. So hang in there, guys. We'll see you in a minute. In the meantime, let's take in all the beautiful glory Microsoft Flight Simulator has to offer. All right, everyone, so we're about 25 miles from Glacier Park International. And as you can see, we are pretty close to the ground right now. The elevation of the airfield of Glacier Park is about 3,000 feet. So traffic altitudes, which we went over in our first episode, is about 1,000 feet above the airport field elevation. So we know that we have to be coming in at around 4,000 feet when we enter the airport traffic pattern so that we can safely make it down to the runway. Now that we are about 24 miles away, what we're going to do is turn on the COM2 radios and see if we can hear any of the ATIS. Airport ATIS information Fox drop 155 find Zulu, wind variable at 3, visibility 10, sky condition clear. Temperature 14, 2.7, altimeter 3004, arriving and departing runway 2, visual approaches in use, 3, backhaul runway assignment and hold short instruction, advise on initial contact, you have information, Foxtrot. 
All right, so we heard some information there. It told us what runway was in use, runway two. It gave us our barrow pressure. I believe it was 3004. Um, we're using custom weather, so it's 29 or 9 or 2 for us. And it also told us what message this was. So this was message Foxtrot. Now that is a way to let the air traffic controller know which weather information you have. Now because we're going to be using custom weather today, we're not going to be using Foxtrot. We're going to be using Zulu. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, uh, we're getting about 20 miles away right now. We do not want to contact the Delta airspace any sooner than 15 miles away. Hey, I hope you guys are enjoying watching the video today and getting a lot of information out of it. If you are, a sub to the channel would be sky high. Probably gonna Alpha wait. Turkey approach Southwest 95, just join the localizer. I'm probably going to wait until we're about Alpha 10 miles out to contact contact. Alpha Turkey Tower. Just remember that we cannot enter the Delta airspace without prior approval. So we have to have prior communications, so just keep that in mind. Seattle departure, Walker 542, 3700, climbing 9. Walker 542, Seattle departure, radar contacts, heading 060, climbing 1107. Alright, so I'm going to show everybody where we are on the map right here. So here's us, here's the airport, we're landing. I'm probably going to contact them when we get it right around here. And Southwest 95 is going around. Southwest 95, thank you. Contact Albuquerque approach 124.4. 127.4, Southwest 94. All right, now we're going to get ready in contact tower. Hopefully we can uh, butt in here between everybody. Before we key up, we want to make sure yeah, that they're not Delta having Bravo, any conversations. So, uh, with you waiting clear. Appreciate Delta Bravo three times. Stand by, please. I am talking to other current aircraft airborne. Glacier Park Tower, Cessna, November 489er Tango Golf, 8 miles north at 4,400 feet, inbound, full stop with information Zulu. Near 489er Tango Golf, Glacier Tower, report, correction, uh, join the right base runway. Before 489er Tango Golf, uh, report missile left on runway 2. Report midfield downwind runway 02, Cessna 489 or Tango Golf. Walker 542, contact Seattle Center 126.6. All right, so right there, uh, they told us what we need to do. We need to get our altitude down to 4,000 feet, so we're going to take our vertical speed indicator and just start Walker dropping us down. Runway 16, clear for takeoff. We're then going to... Enter left downwind runway 02. And we're going to bring back the throttle a little bit now so we can get back down Walker to the Walker 542, clear to Lake. The airport is right off in our front here, and we're going to enter the left downwind yeah, runway 02 on a 45 degree. Once we get midfield, we are then going to the let traffic go. And we're just about at 4,000 feet now. All right, so we want to make sure that we have our landing lights on, which we do. We can also go ahead and tune our NAV1 frequency to our localizer now. That will help us better line up on the runway. Walker 3 contact Oakland Center. And we're going to Oakland now Center, start Walker to 3D. turn in for our downwind, runway 02. Hope everybody enjoys the live ATC. This way you get to see exactly how you need to speak to air traffic control, not using a computer. <laughs> so now what I can do is just turn my heading bug down here right in line with the ILS heading. And that will pretty much get me two parallel. Four, now if you look over to okay, the runway here, here you can actually see you. the four Pappy lights set up right here and they're all white. So there's going to be some down the other side here uh, once we get down and make our base leg to turn in for final. But we do not want to forget our midfield call out. Walker 542, contact Seattle Center 125.1. 25 1, Walker 542. Glacier Park Tower, Cessna November 489er, Tango Golf, reporting midfield runway 02. Walker 542, Seattle Center. Uh, I hope she heard me. Third Eye, Tango Golf, runway 
November 489 or Tango Golf. Uh, was that clear to land for me? 49 or Tango, runway 2, clear to land. November 489 or Tango Golf, clear to land, runway 2. 49 or Tango Golf, affirmative. Okay. I think they're switching between air traffic controllers here. Clear 242 Delta. 242 All right, so we're going to go ahead. They gave us our tower. How do you hear? November 489 or Tango Golf. Please repeat. Good you. 242 Delta Bravo, clear to Monterey Airport. After departure, fly heading 180. Radar vectors, Selena COR direct. Maintain 4,000, correction, maintain 3,000, expect 7,000 on one zero minutes after departure. Departure frequency 121.3. So they did give me a clear to land. So we're going to see what happens here. Now we're going to come in, we're going to add our flaps. Uh, Roger, Torture Delta Bravo, clear to the Monterey Airport. Go after ahead departure, and add heading, our second uh, stage of flaps in Zero radar vectors to Salinas VOR direct. Altitude 3000, now you can see that we have four whites here, that means we're a little bit high, one, two, so one, we're just going to gradually coast walk down in. Two, two, one. Now, it seems like they're pretty busy with air traffic control today, so hopefully we don't get yelled at. But I swore I heard them say clear to land. Hi, one twelve. Thank you. I have report off for cancellation. Miss Frisco, badge frequency. We're on the ground on one two two point two. Change badge frequency approved. We have landed, folks. We're going to go ahead and put our flaps up now and get off the runway. You do not want to stop on the runway. You want to exit as soon as possible. Okay, aircraft call, you know, on SeaTac. Uh, let everybody say, else uh, be able to land. Check your comms, please. So, what we're going to do is turn off on the first taxiway here. San Jose Ground, I hawk. 242 Delta Bravo, is it uh, Whiskey One ready to taxi IFR to Monterey? Now that we're at this holding point, we want to hop in, let them Bravo, know that we are clear on the runway. 242 Delta Bravo. Glacier Park Tower, Cessna November 489 or Tango Golf, clear of the runway. Niner Tango Golf, taxi to parking via Bravo. For Niner Tango Golf, to parking via Bravo. Taxi via Bravo, November 489 or Tango Golf. Thank you. See, they keep switching air traffic controllers between the two, and it's hard to tell who's talking to who. But that's what happens when it gets busy out there, and sometimes we just have to deal with it. That's all a part of flying, so I hope everybody enjoyed the video today. If you have any questions, please go ahead and post those down below. I tried to make this one as interactive as I possibly could, as I couldn't talk much towards the end, because once we get air traffic control on the line, it can get uh, pretty crazy and confusing with a bunch of people talking. So again, if you haven't done so already, please go down below, hit that subscribe, tick that little bell, and smash that thumbs up. And as always, keep the blue side up. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everyone.